Let me pretend that uh, I have a magnetic personality, something like that. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Even better, let me pretend that I have a colorful personality. Well, how does that happen? These days, of course, we're not too mystified by that. You know how it has to be. I must have a magnet, which, of course, explains everything. All right, now for a bit of history. Let's go to hell. I mean, Maximilian hell. An 18th century astronomer. He was Hungarian, a Jesuit, a highly respected astronomer all around Europe. But he also dabbled in magnetic healing. Why? Because in those days, what did doctors do? They bled patients, they purged patients, they tortured them with opium. Eventually, the patient said, enough, enough. That's how he escaped further torture. He said, okay, I'm getting better. Now leave me alone. Well, his ideas were taken up by a young man by the name of Anton Mesmer, another Jesuit. He had just graduated medical school, and he was disturbed by all of these torturous treatments that, that he had to use. He wanted to do something kinder and gentler. And he already had been introduced to the theories of Isaac Newton, gravitation, on how the moon was held to the earth by these invisible gravitational forces. So he was kind of primed for magnetic forces doing something. And uh, he began to follow in hell's footsteps and try to heal people. So the first thing he would do would be to give them little bits of metal, iron to swallow, and then with a magnet, he would move the iron around the body to kind of cleanse the system. Sort of very, very primitive kind of cleansing compared to what they claim to be able to do today with nonsensical coffee enemas and solutions of all kinds but basically the same kind of idea. But not everyone took to wanting to swallow the iron pellets. So he realized that maybe that wasn't necessary and he just had his patients hold on to magnetized rods to suck the disease out of their body. And uh, they claimed to feel better. Of course, they weren't physiologically better, but their perception of the disease uh, certainly changed. And this was all uh, enhanced by Mesmer's showmanship because he would get dressed up in a lavender costume like a wizard and he'd have a wizard's hat and he would walk around his clinic and touch people with his wand and when he touched them they would even get better and pretty soon he found that even that wand wasn't necessary he would just touch them with his hands and they would get better so he coined the phrase animal magnetism he said that the whole universe is permeated by this invisible force called animal magnetism and it flows right through our body and when its flow is impaired it somehow has to, to, to be improved and this can be done by transferring the animal magnetism from a healthy person like himself. So he found that he could sit knee to knee with his patients, mostly young women, and talk to them, gesticulate in front of them and they would get better. They would be mesmerized and sometimes they would have to be taken to a back room for further treatment. He never elaborated on what that further treatment was. The medical establishment was not very happy with Mesmer because he basically took patients away from them because at least he wasn't torturing them back to health. Well, today we recognize Mesmer's contribution. The power of suggestion is what he availed himself of. Basically, he was one of the fathers of hypnosis which today is pretty well established as medical treatment and the power of suggestion, of course, which we refer to as the placebo effect. But Mesmer gave up on using magnetized objects because he recognized they weren't really necessary for the power of suggestion to be invoked. Today, however, there still are people who claim that magnets have some sort of power and they sell all kinds of things. They sell wands, magnetic wands, with which you are supposed to improve your circulation. And they refer to iron atoms and hemoglobin, and that that's what causes the movement. This is pure nonsense. The iron and hemoglobin is paramagnetic. It has a very, very tiny magnetic moment. It would not be affected by an external magnet. If it were, every time we went for an MRI, the blood would burst out of our body because M MRIs use very, very powerful uh, magnets. But it's understandable that people are still mystified by magnets because they are, in fact, pretty amazing. 
just look at this. I have a magnetic ring here, and I put on this ring, it attracts. If I turn it around and put it this way, well, then it can be made to, to float. Now that is absolutely amazing. It's amazing even to me as, I, as I, I watch this. So it's not surprising that people attribute all kinds of magical powers to, to magnets. And uh, although mesmerism is um, established today as really scientific fact through the power of suggestion, this stuff that goes around today with magnetic healing, with magnetic inserts into shoes, with bracelets, earrings, etc., uh, what people are doing is just spending hard-earned money, and what they're buying is fool's gold. They're buying magic.